Israel says it is investigating how its defences failed to prevent a drone strike in central Tel Aviv. Houthi rebels in Yemen claimed responsibility for the attack, which killed one person and injured at least 10 others. They say the strike was in retaliation for Israel's war in Gaza. The explosion came around 3 a.m. local time, blowing out windows and damaging cars. A drone strike right in the heart of Tel Aviv, raining down shrapnel and shards of glass just metres from the US embassy. Even for a nation at war, this was a startling strike. The Iranian-made drone appears to have come from the Mediterranean Sea. No air raid alarms were triggered and it avoided the Iron Dome defence system. The Israeli army said it was investigating and it would take all actions necessary to protect the country. The Israeli Air Force is currently examining the incident, including the reason of why no alerts were sounded. This is not a stealth UAV. This is an Iranian UAV. It was detected by our systems. We are examining the circumstances of why it wasn't intercepted. Yemen's Houthi rebel forces claimed responsibility, declaring Tel Aviv as a, quote, primary target. The drone force of the Yemeni Houthi armed forces, with Allah's help, carried out a military operation that targeted one of the important targets in the occupied Jaffa area, known as Tel Aviv by the Israelis. The United Nations condemned the strike and called for calm. The Secretary General remains deeply concerned about the risk such dangerous acts pose for further escalation in the region. He urges all to exercise maximum restraint and to de-escalate to avoid further inflaming the situation in the region. The Israeli army believes the drone was launched from Yemen, raising the question of how it travelled more than 2,000 kilometres without being intercepted. This was not the first time the Yemeni rebels have targeted Israel with drones, but it is the first lethal strike by the Houthis on Israeli soil. Well, I'm joined now by security analyst Marina Marone. She is with King's College London. Marina, it's good to see you. Israel's army, it believes that this drone was launched from Yemen. How did that drone reach Israel undetected? Good evening, Brent. Well, the investigation is still ongoing in terms of what happened and how the drone managed to evade air defenses. But if we look at the footage, for instance, the drone was coming from the Mediterranean. So looking at the map, it wasn't expected to come from that direction. Um, that's number one. The other possibility, of course, combined with that is the fact that these drones are manufactured in such a way as to evade air defenses. And it seems to be a new iteration of the Samad 3 drone that the Houthis have mm -hmm. been used. So there is a possibility that um, the air defenses were not enough. And Israel has been struggling with um, drones specifically because its air defenses are designed for missiles. So what do we know about the, the drone that was used in this strike? Well, so far as there are conflicting reports, we know that um, some reports refer to this drone as a Yaha drone, which is an upgraded version of a Samad 3 drone. Now, Samad 3 drone was developed in 2018, and it is um, designed by Iran. However, Houthis have been able to use um, domestic and foreign components in order to manufacture these drones. So apparently that's a drone that is claimed to have a range of um, one and a half thousand kilometers that has been used. Hmm. The Houthis say that they will keep targeting Israel. Were they lucky that the drone was able to reach Tel Aviv this time or could this pose a serious new threat to Israel's air defenses? Well, in terms of air defenses, um, 
obviously Israel is now dealing also with Hezbollah in the north. So it would create a problem for Israel um, when it comes to intercepting these drones. And um, a Houthi spokesman said that that is just the beginning of the escalation. However, if we look at the geography, I don't think that it would be um, very efficient for Houthis to try and attack Israeli territory. They are much more successful attacking the ships in the Red Sea and putting a lot of pressure. So it remains to be seen what happens, but I, I think that Israel will have to also rely on the Allied help in order to intercept drones. If Houthis, as they claim, designed to use these uh, modif modified Samad 3 against Israel. We've seen drones being used extensively in the war between Russia and Ukraine. Are militant groups like the Houthis, are they employing tactics learned from that conflict? Well, I would say it's actually the other way around because um, drones offer such groups an asymmetric advantage because they, they are much cheaper to manufacture. And as far as Houthis are concerned, in this specific example, they have started using um, drones as early as late 2015 or so, and they have been developing their own drones and using them against um, Saudi Arabia, against Saudi forces, as well as um, targets on Saudi territory. So I think, um, if anything, they might have inspired um, the use of drones. And of course, we have seen the use of uh, Bayraktar TB2s in Nagorno-Karabakh. So th this is an evolution. And what we're seeing here with the Houthis is that they are trying to perfect their craft and upgrade their drones by using foreign components and domestic mm -hmm. components, for instance, to increase the payload or evade air defenses or increase the endurance of their drones. Before we run out of time, Marina, we know the Houthis are backed by Iran. Is it likely that Iran played a direct role in this strike? Well, Iran has been supporting Houthis, but it doesn't mean that Iran coordinates every single strike that um, the affiliated groups conduct. So it's difficult to say, but I, I, I might, might be, but um, they still have their own goal. So each of these groups um, in the axis have their own political ambitions, but they share the common enemy. So there is a likelihood that Iran could have been involved, but um, perhaps it's just a Houthi thing. Security analyst Marina Marone. Marina, as always, thank you.